from the Mormon house. Hey guys. Hold. Household. Yeah, we'll, we'll, that we'll, works, we'll, right? we'll use that for now. Um, it's extremely windy out here, so yeah, we got uh, bear with us. Yeah, little coals flying out everywhere though, but uh, I, th I think we'll be okay. This deck already has burn marks in it, but um, it's, it goes well with the house. What can I say? That's right. We're just adding to the character. That's right. Hey, we were so excited when Leisureless asked us to do this. I mean, let me go ahead and say something right now. I am by no means a grill master. I enjoy grilling. Um, some people tend to like it. And uh, I don't need too many excuses to uh, get the grill out. So when they asked me to do it, of course, my answer was yes. So, Duh. Yes. Well, and to piggyback onto that, you enjoy it. And I think anyone who enjoys grilling is a grill master. Yeah, I mean, it's grill season. The weather's not ideal, though. But it's, I mean... The sun's out somewhere, a little cloudy though, but uh, I mean... At it's, least it's not raining. Yes, I think that's tomorrow. And all weekend. So, we yes. picked a good day to do this. Um, thank you for... Hey guys, hey! Yay! Grill pastor compared to me. Jerry, you're sweet. This, okay. is, this is my first Insta... Live. Live. Ever. I've and been I'm, doing I'm it for a while. I'm not very good at stuff like this. If there was a room full of people right now, I would be profusely sweating. But uh, in this case, I get to stand next to a grill and be sweating still regardless. Sweating. Yes. yes. Um, so to kind of walk through what we're gonna do with this live, um, Chase is really good at a certain recipe that he gets comments on all the time. It's very simple, but it's really good on a grill. It's his smashed potatoes. So he's gonna walk through that. And then what else are you gonna grill? I'm gonna grill a tomahawk steak. Fun. Um, I'm gonna kind of MC this because I want you guys to really engage here and ask questions. Um, no question is a silly question because I'm new to the grilling game as well, so I would probably wanna know as well. Um, and feel free to ask us any questions about city supply. So, yes, if we don't know the answers, we will just act like we didn't see the uh, question. <laughs> True. Um, so, Chase is gonna grill, he's gonna do his thing. I'm gonna walk through with him, I'm gonna kinda MC it. Yeah, the sound, the menu does sound perfect for a Father's Day grill. Someone just said that. Jarrah said the menu that we're doing tonight sounds great for oh, a yeah. Father's Day grill. Oh yeah. So, ask us questions. We put a question mark uh, box on the Leisure List and City Supply story this morning. So, um, we got a lot of questions already. So I'm going to interject those as they come up and the time comes up for those. But follow along. Sit back. Grab a beer. Act like you're grilling with us. Yeah. Make a menu, make a shopping list, do it this weekend, tag us. We're doing a um, hashtag this summer called Grilling with City Supply, the whole hashtag. Every single week, we're gonna select one post, whether it's a story post or Instagram post, who wins a gift card to City Supply because you guys are doing awesome things when you're grilling, we like to see it. So, hopefully this is some inspiration for you guys to get out and grill this weekend. You want to start doing your thing? Yeah, um, I feel like I should introduce my uh, starting lineup. Yes, um, I'll get out of the way. This, you kind of just stand there. This is my Argentina <laughs> Can K grill. Um, I've had a lot of questions sent to me about it. Where'd you get it? Where are they from? Can I get one now? Um, are they really from Argentina? And the answer to that question is um, yes. A little background story on this. There was a documentary on Netflix that I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard of. It's called uh, Chef's yes. Table. And Francis Mallman was the chef of this particular episode. Of course, he's Argentinian. He is the best chef, in my opinion, in the world, but he's by far the best chef, uh, chef in um, South America. But he, uh, he cooks on devices like this. He's more known for cooking on open fires. Um, they would whole, I mean, I guess whole pigs, whole cows, he'll dig pits in the ground and throw a cow in that and cook it. I mean, it's, it's amazing. If you haven't seen it on Netflix, uh, Chef's Table, Francis Smallman, check it out, though. But I actually got this on Etsy of all places. And because uh, I looked on the uh, Can KMR's website, they were sold out. Look at some other websites, gone. Found it on Etsy of all, of all places. And once I reached out, once I got it and I reached out to Can K, the guy's uh, Argentina, they actually said, where did you get it? And uh, after some uh, back and forth, 
um, I kind of introduced myself and told them that uh, I was a big grill guy and that we have a retail shop in Fayetteville, Arkansas in America. And uh, you know, long story short, we sell them now. So we are the first retail store in the U.S. that sells them. So I think that's pretty cool though. But uh, I mean, you have the griddle, which is my favorite part, and the traditional grill, great. And uh, right now I'm actually gonna throw some onions on it right now just to get those grilled up get get the smoke infused with it get a little char on it so hang on <laughs> i'm gonna jump in here and kind of piggyback off that so chase can kind of chase kind of walk through how he went into investing in this company he i'm gonna take this off and actually flip it around sorry you're seeing my face how do i flip this around oh here we go oh, okay so we've got <laughs> um we've got the onions on the grill here on the griddle part of the grill and like chase said it also comes with the grill grate doesn't that look good you guys oh yeah and the only really reason i'm doing this i mean you can do this at any time though but what i like to do is really put some char on these things you know let, let the grill do its work you know get some color in these onions i like a little crunch and I actually like a little burnt too. And once you watch that Francis Mullman uh, chef's table, you'll understand that. Some people call it burnt, I call it flavor, other people call it flavor though. But I mean, the more you get these crisp, crisp up, they're going to be that much better with the potatoes, which I, which I will get those on pretty shortly. But literally every time I break the grill out, this is, uh, I have to cook this. If I don't have potatoes, I, I gotta go get them because this is by far a curses favorite That's recipe. That's true. So, I mean, I I feel like every time I cook them, they're a little different, though, but uh, look, they always get the same result. Like. So, Chase, the the burnt that you're talking about, um, that is a Francis Mallman technique, right? Yeah. And so you learned that through watching the yeah, documentary I mean, on... What he, the first time I saw him do it, he was actually doing, like, cherry tomatoes. He would cut them, on, cut them in half uh, face side down and just leave them there. And literally, once he finally take them off the grill or flip them over, they'd be black. Yeah. I mean, carbonized, burnt, you know, pick whatever you like, but I mean, it just gives it that much more flavor, that mm -hmm. crisp, with that, that bite to it. That uh, I mean, I've done those same tomatoes, and uh, I don't want to compare myself to Francis Solomon by any means, so I mean, they were pretty, they were pretty good. I mean, so much that I have about 60 tomato plants growing. That's true in my, in my uh, little window garden area right over there so uh yeah whatever it, their trick their black magic worked on me so right now if you're just joining us because we have a couple new people um chase is grilling the onions so that they have a little bit of char on them we want a little black because that is the technique we like he talked about uh francis malman out of argentina um, is a chef that has inspired him lately, especially in the grilling field. He has a really great um, documentary on Netflix. Is it Netflix? Netflix? Netflix right now. So go ahead and look that up. Um, get inspired. And then you can talk to Chase about it whenever you're in the shop next. Or you can DM him too. Cause yes, I, anytime we sell one of these in the store, I, I, I tell people, like, look, if you have any questions, all you have to do is DM me, DM the store, call the store. I love I mean, I don't need excuses to talk about this grill. <laughs> you know, the, my, my friends, uh, my, I even call them my brothers now in Argentina, they're always, if, if I have a question I don't know the answer to, I holler at them and they're very quick yeah. to, to get back to me. I mean, Thomas, the main guy I talk to daily, he's a good guy. I mean, you should see some of the magic he does on these grills. I mean, of course, they were they were raised that way, but I mean, it's the cuts of beef, the, 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 the vegetables they put on this thing, or they there's an accessory that you can hang things and you know if it's, if it's ribs if it's a beef tenderloin if it's a pork tenderloin or a cabbage or whatever carrots i mean this thing will do it all and um i think these onions got a pretty good sear on them and kind of getting those oils going so um i'm gonna smash some of these potatoes okay you want to walk us through what you do i'm gonna kind of follow you around here okay cool all right. So these aren't just any normal potatoes. These are potatoes from Whole Foods. And uh, just, <laughs> yeah, just standard yellow potatoes that you would see like in that, in that plastic bag. But uh, of course you want to boil them. I mean, boil them enough where, I mean, literally a fork and knife can just kind of slide right through them. And what you will see here, I want to put a glove on. I always wear a glove when you do this, it's, it's hot. 
You can do it on the griddle, your grill, your cast iron skillet, but I recommend not doing that though because it gets it gets pretty hot. And you know, well, and you just want safety stuff. first, right? Yes, and I have a few burn marks. So literally, you will see these essentially explode. <laughs> but what I do, I throw enough cheese on there, it kind of brings it all back together. Okay. So, I mean, not a whole lot of pressure. Just boom, just like that. And how long did you boil them for? Twenty minutes. Twenty I mean, just minutes. Boil them enough where you can like stick a stick a knife, stick a fork. Though. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, just boom. Very easy. These are actually going pretty pretty well. Sometimes they just like explode. Yeah. All right, that looks good so far. Yeah. So we boiled these for 20 minutes. Pretty tender. Chase just smashed them easily with a spatula. And now we're adding them basically where, right where you had the onions. So there's a little flavor there. I mean, once you put them on, just give them another little smash. These actually look pretty good. Normally it's just like falling off the grill and you know. Well, sometimes the messier the better. That's true. But I mean, it will get pretty messy. Like that one could definitely smash down a little more. So you would say that there's no perfect technique to grilling? No, I mean, unless you're from Argentina. <laughs> then the pressure's on. Yeah, then the pressure's on though. But uh, right here in the South, we can, uh, we can stir it up a little bit and, and call it, you know, taters. Right, right. Potatoes. So yeah. That looks good, Chase. What do we think? Yeah. Give those onions a little stir. And also what's cool about this grill. So see I need a little bit more. This is oak by the way. This is just firewood oak that I've had for, you know, probably close to two years. That I need to get more. But uh, I just chop it up. Just throw it in. There's like there's a door right here though, but I just throw it right there. That's awesome. So it's pretty convenient. Easy peasy. So the advantage of the can K grill is that you have accessibility to the fire. You have a griddle aspect. So we're sprinkling on some olive oil. Awesome. And then you also have the attachments like the grill grate. Um, there's a couple other. Oh, our mailman is coming. Hey! hey. We're shooting a live video. Say hi. Hi! <laughs> Thank you so much. This woman works her tail off. Oh my gosh, she, I, I know. know. You saw her sporting up our driveway, though, but she's amazing. She does our pickups at City Supply and Riffraff, too. I still got them. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so you much. Have, Have a great day. Thanks. <laughs> she is seriously the nicest woman I've ever met in I my know. life. She makes me want to be a better person. She works. Yeah, she works okay. her ass off. Okay. So, look how good that looks. We've got our smashed taters. And now, do you kind of want to walk through um, what you've done with your tomahawk steak so far? Well, um, here, I've always been a big steak guy. You know, growing up, going to Doe's. I would, of course, get, like, just the, the two-pound sirloin. But as I got <laughs> older and learned more about uh, about beef, I started going for the, the ribeyes, you know, the fillets, you know. But, I mean, right now, anything, any, any bone-in ribeye, there's bone-in fillets now, is, is my favorite. So what the tomahawk is, I think it's about a pound and a half. I mean, tomahawk is self-explanatory. There's a rib bone sticking out about this much. So, I mean... The bone that gives it a little more flavor. I mean, the meat in uh, like touching that the bone, mm -hmm. it makes it tender. It's the it's the best. So you highly recommend a cut of meat with the bone in. Oh yeah, of course. Yes. Okay. Hey, I have a really good question that someone just asked. Haley just asked, do you have issues with the griddle stopping a smoke flavor from coming into your food with this? No, you know it, it really doesn't. I mean, because it it lofts over. You know, the smoke over, is able to yeah, come over. It comes over at any time. You know, you can see the flames just dance around there. The you know the smoke's just popping out. But uh, I mean, I I try to cook these inside, like on a rainy or a snowy day. It does not have that same flair to it. I have cooked them in a cast iron skillet on top of this, which it gave it the same flavor as the as the griddle would. But uh, no, I don't think you. So have the can K is open enough to allow that smoke to come oh, into yeah. the food you're grilling which is why you like the grill flavor you know oh, yeah i mean you can buy all sorts of of wood from i mean i've gotten wood from academy 
sports, that's just like a 30 pound bag that you can get cherry, you can get apple, you can get oak, you can get mesquite, hickory. I mean, there's so many different flavors out there. I tend to go with oak. I mean, it's readily available. You know, yeah. I use it in my solo stoves. I use it in, you know, fires outside, taking it camping though. But uh, I mean, literally I, I can take one log, chop it up and I can, I can use that one log to uh, fuel this can can. Cool, right? okay. So what I'm gonna do now is find my spatula. Yes, I'm following you. Um, someone asked, and this is a great question. We got this question earlier on our question box. Where do you get your meat? Well, growing up, I lived off Rolling Hills. And anybody in that area, or anybody from Fayetteville knows that Richard's Meat Market is right in that area. So growing up, talking to Chris, Richard's son, who I still talk to to this day, I mean, he can get any cut of beef you're looking for. I mean, last year I got a 68 pound whole pig <laughs> and uh, and grilled it Argentina style around this deck. Uh, the neighbors were very curious. Uh, I don't think they were upset though, but uh, they, were, they never saw a whole pig cooking on, uh, on this side of town before. But uh, I mean, Chris is a great guy with Richard's Meat Market. I mean, if you look for a cut of, certain cut of beef, uh, he'll try to find it for you if they don't have it. But uh, I mean, during this quarantine craziness, um, Snake River Farms is a great resource for beef, for pork. I mean, they have, like, they have Wagyu, crazy cuts. Um, I can't even pronounce some of the names. But, um, I mean, they ship it right to you on dry ice. They can ship it to you fresh. I mean, the Tomahawk Steak, though, I was here. I was, uh, that, that's exactly where I got it from. And uh, they were doing a special not too long ago. So they took Wow. I, w I was all about that. So we would say Richard's Meat Market, and then, you know, if they don't have anything you want or need, Snake River Farms pretty much has anything you would want. I mean, if you're in a time crunch, honestly, Sam's Club, I hate to say it. <laughs> I mean, they got great cuts. They really I mean, do really have a really yeah. great meat market. I mean, I've told people, you know, who I guess who've lived on that side of town, I was like, dude, just go to, go to Sam's. They yeah. Got, they got excellent cuts. If you're not a member, I highly. <laughs> I feel like you should be one. Well, in Northwest Arkansas, you have to be a Sam's Club member. That's right. Support Waltons. <laughs> so I guess you could say they're kind of local. Yeah, right? Yeah. Um, okay. So I just kind of keep moving this around, you know, chop it up a little bit. Because what I want to do now, my favorite part. So we've added the onions on top of the smashed potatoes. Throw a little cheese on there. Yum. This is a special reserve cheese that you get at Whole Foods. <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, I've tried other cheeses though, but the only way you figure out the ones you like and dislike is by trying as many as possible. This so is your favorite. This one, I'll uh, And don't put a whole lot on there because you're going to put stuff on, cheese on, you know, constantly. And what I like about doing that is, so this cheese I put in now will be crispy when mm, I take it off. I and see that what top you mean. Layer will be just, I mean, it might even just look like that. Yeah. But it's gonna be, it's gonna be like super soft to crispy as you go down. So don't put all your cheese on top right away. Have layers to it. So we've, we're, we've started the crispy layer, you could say. I like that. I'm learning. Oh, here this we go. This is the cheese. Vintage Reserve Cheddar, Barber's 1833. That's, that's, uh. oh yeah, this is the stuff. Get it at your local hof Whole Foods. Yes. Yes, it's delicious. Which I'm sure you can find no, other no, places too. But is, this is the secret right here. I mean, it's not to the smashed potatoes. Yeah, I mean, the smoke, yes. The grill, yes. Though, but that cheese is delicious. Everyone loves some good cheese. Look how good this looks. Okay. Okay. Now, this is where it kind of falls apart. Oh, we're doing a little flip. Flip it over. See, look at those grill marks on there. Yeah. It just breaks apart. Mm -hmm. Once I put more cheese on there, kind of holds it back it's together. together. Yeah, I mean it's not going to be pretty, but I mean, at this hey, point, that's all right. It doesn't matter. And the onions are just kind of throughout the whole conglomerate of taters. This is good. I'm trying to keep this plain, so I don't want to sear my steak. Oh, I think I got off my searing steak. 
Yes, we yeah. got distracted. So tell us what you're going to do with your so, steak. So, um, you know, back in the day, or you know, most of my life, you just take a steak, let it get to room temperature always. That's step one. Always okay. get your steak to room temperature. Because you, know, you throw it on a grill, it's just it being cold internally, it's going to just take longer. It's going to take longer to cook. So just get it to room temperature. It's fine. Season it up if you wish. Season it on the grill if you wish. That's, I mean, it's completely up to you. But then, um, with reverse searing, because if you throw it in the oven, don't grill it first. Throw it in the oven, okay. I think, you know, the temperature I've done is between 250 and 275. Of course, how thick is the steak, determines. But, uh, you know, 275 for about, well, you kind of read about internal temperature. So the one I did just now, I let the internal temperature get to about 120. And whenever you do that, take it out at 115 degrees though because even though it's out of the, of the oven mm -hmm. it's still going to cook to about about five six more degrees so uh you know once you do that let it rest i know it's hard for us guys to, do, to let the steak rest though, but let it let it rest let those juices kind of absorb back into the meat okay and then once once it's kind of rest for about 10 minutes under foil 10 15 even 20 minutes depending on the size of the steak Seared on the grill. I mean, you can do it on the griddle. You can do it on the traditional uh, grill grate. I mean, you can do it on a cast iron. But uh, I mean, really, I mean, what that does, as you guys all probably know, it just locks in the flavor. It gives it a little bit extra crunch. But once you cut into it, I mean, essentially the, the meat's done. Mm -hmm. You've already cooked it. But what you, when you put that sear on it, it just brings it all together, holds those juices inside. It's delicious. Okay, well that okay that makes me feel. Um more confident because you know I don't know what you're talking about when you say sear a steak I'm gonna sear a steak tonight now I know what you mean it cooks in the oven and then you're just gonna sear it right. on the grill so we're adding a second layer of cheese now do you use a whole block of cheese for your I, smashed potatoes I try to, yes yes that's why my, not that's my goal um, okay let me ask some of the questions that people have submitted um, where do you get your inspiration for cooking and grilling other than Francis Malman that you've already talked about? Some of the guys that um, Spiceology have sponsored over the years. Now, Spiceology is a line that we carry in Spiceology City Supply. Spiceology is a line that we carry in City Supply. They have all sorts of spices. You name it, they got it. It's, I mean, I forget what the saying is. It's, it's owned by chefs. So all the guys who work there, they're all chefs. They know what works, they know what doesn't work. But they sponsor two guys, um, Derek Wolf and Sasquatch of Sasqu Sasquatch Barbecue. Derek Wolf's out of Nashville. Sasquatch is in Washington State. And if you don't follow those guys online on Instagram, they they're are magicians. awesome. Yes, I mean we can we carry their private label, a uh, Spiceology. Um, blends at City Supply. Mm -hmm. I think Derek's got Derek's got like eight, eight or nine. Um, Sasquatch has got three right now. He's coming out with some soon. But uh, I mean, he just came out with a line that we picked up, just kind of influenced by uh, South America. So it kind of goes perfect with everything we're doing here. But uh, I well, mean, well, Haley, that, Haley, who asked the really great question earlier, said that. She loves Derek's Instagram page, but hasn't tried the spices yet. So Haley, come visit us at City Supply. Yeah, you know where we are. <laughs> We've got them. But I mean, honestly, they, I mean, Derek Wolf has a can K. Uh, Sasquatch is known for cooking out the elements. You know, he lives up in Washington State where it's just beautiful rivers, mountains, streams. He just cooks on the side of, the, of a stream or river. Steak, you know, sides, fish, he, he just does it all. He's famous for not using a spatula or anything. He just gets his big Sasquatch hands and just flips the steak, grease popping everywhere. But uh, It's good to watch. I mean, those I guys, enjoy it. Those guys know what they're doing. And, you know, I've spoken to them a few times and I kind of get all starstruck when I do. But, they're, I mean, they're just normal guys. Yeah. But what they do, they have a passion for cooking. And it's just, you know, it makes my job so much more fun when they have a passion for it and they put out good products. I mean, some of the some of the uh, products that Derek Wolf just came out, I haven't tried them yet, but I know they're phenomenal because Spiceology backs them and he's got a passion for it. So, I mean, yeah. we'll put a little bit more cheese on these things. And then let's get that meat on the grill. Yeah, you want to? Yeah. Okay. And speaking of Sasquatch... The Spiceology Moss is what brings all of this together. 
Oh, okay. So it's a city spot. Let me get a good picture of this. And like I said, it's just an all-purpose herb rub. So yeah. this, this goes on anything. I mean, as you, if you looked in my house with all the different bottles that I have, this one is the most empty. And I think that's your second one in a couple months. That's true. Um, so Sasquatch is the gentleman who lives in Washington. Washington State, who grills in the elements, and it's so much fun to watch. I enjoy it. Um, so that's someone definitely to follow. That looks so good. Okay, so we also have to mention that we have a giveaway going on later. Um, so make sure you're following Leisure List. Leisure List is a great resource for our community. If you don't follow them, you need to. Um, and they're hosting a giveaway with City Supplies, so you might be able to win some spices or a gift card to buy some spices, right? All right, we're adding some olive oil. So I cleaned up, I mean, this is, one of my favorite things about this grill is it's, it's kind of messy. Yeah, you know, it, that's it, right. It's not gonna be clean all the time, but you know, I've had, I've had potatoes, I've had onions, I've had cheese on this side. So once I kind of oil that up again and get that sear on, This looks so good. Oh gosh, okay. Sorry. So I was this tight. is a tomahawk steak. I cooked one, what was it like two days ago? Yep. Let's call it three. <laughs> that was twice as big. I've seen the you know the bones up to here, it's just massive. So this thing is essentially done. What we're doing now is just stirring it up. I mean, depending on how hot this grill is, I mean, you can sear that for, you know, at least a couple minutes. That looks good, Chase. So you use the moss on this one as well? I did not. I oh. used the uh, Derek Wolf's new uh, garlic herb. Go get it. Let's show it. These are three new blends to City Supply by Derek Wolf, which is over the fire cooking. That's the stuff, you guys. We had this the other night, right? Yes. And it was so good. It was good. Anything with garlic is my, uh, I feel like garlic's my love language. It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Especially when uh, you don't have to like, chop it and peel it. Yes, they make it easy for yeah. you. Easy right here. All right. So we've got the tomahawk steak, smashed potatoes going. These are easy go-tos once you get the hang of it. We've got several layers of cheese on there. Um, tell us how you start the can cake. Um, that's a great question, actually. I probably should have mentioned that earlier. So, you can do it a couple different ways. I recommend doing charcoal, lump charcoal, cowboy charcoal is what I find to be the best. You can get that, you can get that at Walmart, you can get it on Amazon, you can probably get it at your local hardware store. But uh, I like to use one chimney of, of lump charcoal, and then I like to use just like kindling of a uh, of, of firewood. So what the, really what the, what the uh, wood adds the smoke, that smoke flavor, and the uh, charcoal is kind of supplies the heat. Though. Of course, once that wood starts burning, it's going to add more heat too, though. But uh, I mean, I tell people if you're kind of like a time crunch, just go with uh, just go with lump charcoal if you got some time to spare and throw some wood in there. Yeah. So I mean, okay. it, it's pretty easy, but uh, you know, I like the combination combination of, of wood and carbon cowboy charcoal it's, yeah it's just fun and um i got a question earlier from somebody that said you know when people are on the grill mm. what should i look for and it's kind of evolved over the years for me you know for convenience you know i'm, I'm not bashing any grill you know pick <laughs> pick whatever you want for convenience you cannot beat propane you can go out there flip up a switch or turn up a knob right it's on give it a little scrape you're ready to go um, I mean, a Weber, a Weber, you can cook on that, but you got to get the charcoal ready. You got to get, you know, now pull it out, get the charcoal ready, and get it good and hot, and then pour it in there, and then, you know, kind of a little bit longer process. This is the same way. Mm -hmm. you know, I can't just turn this on. I got to get it out. I kind of got to assemble it. super easy to assemble. And then I got to, you know, get the lump charcoal started, chop up the wood, though. But that's, that's what I love to do. I mean, cooking for me. It's a process, it's kind of a way to entertain people 
you know, when anytime somebody sees the can K at its finest, you know, I'm not saying that I'm, you know, the best at it though, but they're like, oh wow, that thing's cool. You know, I was, yeah. uh, I might get in trouble for saying this. I was talking to my California friend who I just sent him one. I said, well, it's a sexy way to start cooking. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you have a have a get together, you pull this thing out. I mean, you can't you just can't learn to cook on this thing in a day. But uh, once you kind of figure it out and learn the, the ins and outs, I mean, it's just fun. Yeah. I mean, you love it, so. Oh, yeah. It works. It looks good, Chase. Yeah. Everyone's enjoying it. A um, couple more questions. Some fun ones. Okay. What is your favorite meal? It doesn't even have to be grill related. My favorite meal is breakfast for dinner. Oh, Brenner. Brenner. Yeah. So um, eggs, bacon, toast, jam, butter, orange juice, milk at night. Nothing better. Reminds me of my childhood. It, you know, it was the first meal that I cooked for Kirsten years ago when we <laughs> first started dating. It's just, it's something that, you know, I love. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, Brenner, if, you have, if you've never done it, which I'd be surprised if you haven't, you should definitely have breakfast for dinner one, one night. And you've done Brenner on the grill. I have. When I first got this, that was the first thing I cooked on it. I cooked a bunch of eggs, some bacon, some hash browns, bunch of potatoes. It was great. And you've also done brunch out here for friends before, like a good 10 a.m. breakfast. Yes, that was uh, with a bunch of kids running around. That was, that was, uh, that was fun. Yeah. So. Of, yeah, but, I mean, you can cook all sorts of things on this, though, but, uh, you know, breakfast is my favorite thing. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so you talked a little bit about a Weber gr- Weber grill. That's hard for me to say. Mm-hmm. Um, and someone else asked, asked earlier if you've ever smoked meat. Kind of walk through the evolution of apparatuses that you've had, because in the three years I've we've lived here, you've had a lot of stuff. Well, back in the day when I first started, got interested in smoking. I think I bought one of those, you know, couple of screws here and there. Mm-hmm. You know, super lightweight aluminum, not aluminum, but just like you know stand up smokers and you know i you, you learn to cook on things like that but over the years i've used i've used green eggs um i've never used a traeger i very much am interested in those for the convenience factor of it but as you know i'm a traditional guy i got a 400 pound cast iron smoker that that i use because i just I, I i can't just walk away from it for a few hours I have right to, i have to watch the, the fire if it gets too hot it's going to ruin whatever i'm cooking so uh, I just like sitting out there, especially if it's a nice day. Yeah. So I mean, literally, if you want to get into smoking, you can. I mean, you can smoke on a Weber. You can smoke on this. You can smoke on a big 500, mm-hmm. you know, 500 pound piece of iron. But uh, I mean, just it's. I mean, it's fun. So I mean, yeah. ribs, brisket, you know, pork butts, chicken, chicken quarters, whole chickens. So I mean. Someone just asked what you thought of the green egg. Uh, <laughs> okay, so my thoughts on the green egg is I wish, and I'm just not kept telling Kristen this, I wish I wouldn't have sold the one that she had. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, it was something new to me. I didn't want to really mess with it. I was like, uh-uh, I don't want to set it and forget it. I want to sit there and watch it next to a cooler beer and listen to some music. But uh, but they are they are good. Um, I just... I, I wish we would. I wish we wouldn't have sold. Ours. Wish we would have invested in yes. trying it out a little bit more. I wish I watched a few more YouTube videos. <laughs> okay, so we regret getting rid of the egg. Yeah. So, but if you have one, seriously, dive into it. Dive it. Learn. Watch YouTube. Follow some guys on Instagram. I mean, you can do anything on those things. And I learned that unfortunately after we sold it. <laughs> right. So, yeah. That's I'm okay. Gonna flip, I'm gonna flip this thing. Okay. We'll see what it looks like. Wow. Okay. A little char marks in there uh-huh. on the side. And what this, what, what this doing is just searing in that flavor. So one thing that we learned through Francis Malman is you put the item, whether it's vegetables, meat, um, tomatoes, potatoes, on the grill, and you don't move it. You yeah, let it I mean, char. He, he, he's so animated. He's just like, you know, all this flippy floppy. I mean, he said, just leave it. Yeah. He goes, I mean, if you get some... It's, it's not going to stick to the grill. Once it carbonizes, burns underneath it, it's going to easily come off that grill. Right. So, I mean, just let the, let the grill do its thing. And if you, I mean, if you kind of mess up or like you feel like you left it on there too long, you, you know. You <laughs> learn. I mean, that's the only way. I mean, I'm no grill master. I've made some steaks that, I mean, one of the best steaks I ever made growing up was off the George Foreman. Right. Yeah. I mean, so I there you go. I it in the wall and I seared it on both sides. It's delicious. <laughs> and, you know, I've made some delicious steaks on this, and other times I haven't. So, I mean, you learn. 
Well, like I said, part of being a grill master is the process, not the outcome. Wisdom. We should put that Wisdom. on a quote and sell it on a canvas. That's right. <laughs> Yes, we'll, we'll Maybe a t-shirt. We're we'll working on that. Yeah. Okay. So, how are our potatoes doing? I'm going to grab my notes. Because I wrote down some questions that people asked. Do you want to talk a little bit about the um, spices, the other two spices from Derek Wolf that just came out that we have in City Supply? I mean, okay. So, all the steaks that he just recently came out, came out with, they're all South American kind of in the middle of It's from though, but he has one from Argentina. Oh, yeah, it's an Argentina flavored one. He's got one from, um, God, I well, they're right there, right? Okay. Yeah, sorry guys, we're running to get we're running to get the spices. There's like an adobe honey, and then there's a steakhouse blend, yeah, right? Like Brazilian, Brazilian, Valcho steakhouse. Valcho, yes. of course, it's cowboy. Oh, we love that. I'll look that up. <laughs> okay, so, um, what is I'm asking you some questions, okay. Chase, while you continue. Um, what is your favorite protein to grill, and what's your favorite way to season it? Man, I either love a thick bone-in pork chop. Yeah. Or I just like a bone-in ribeye. For the ribeye, it doesn't have to be that thick, though. But when it comes to a pork chop, and Kirsten always makes fun of me, salt and pepper. That's all, <laughs> that's all I want on a, on a beautiful, thick bone-in pork chop. But it's, it really was whatever, whatever floats your boat. If you want salt and pepper, great. If you want to go with a, you know, marinade, a marinade, fancy. If you want to go with something that you created, I mean, just I mean, just go for it. I mean, yeah. you, you know what you like, you know what you don't like. But your favorite I mean, is salt and pepper on yeah, a I, I would have pork. to say salt and pepper on a thick, beautiful bone-in pork chop. Okay, another question. Your famous smashed potato recipe that we're doing today how did you develop it? Did you see it somewhere or did you just kind of come up with it in your mind? I think I saw Francis' mama mess around with it one time. Of course, I mean, and then I just started messing around with different cheeses and onions and different vegetables. I put jalapenos on it. it turned, out, turned out to be a little bit too spicy though, but you know, after many, many attempts, man, just, just that special reserve cheddar, some red onions, grilled sauteed, plenty of cheese, Spiceology, Sasquatch moss, and uh, mm. just and burn it up a little bit. Get some, get some crisp. I mean, once you bite into this, you're not. It's not going to be just so soft like Mama's mashed potatoes. It's going to be crispy. You know, you're, you're, you're going <laughs> to taste the onions. You're going to taste the smoke. You're going to taste the Spiceology products. You know, but uh, and that's what's fun about it is because you you might not like this, but you you like the concept of it. Yeah, I'm gonna try. Yeah, make it your own. Now I'm gonna try uh, you know some other. Yeah. But something that you always tend to gravitate towards is having more of a burnt, crisp searing mm -hmm. to everything, yeah. even the vegetables. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Are we transferring this now? I think we are. All right. Okay. Waving to the neighbors. Okay. So. Okay. What is just as important <laughs> is presentation. And let me go ahead and save you all the trouble. I got this thing at a flea market. That's right. I found it in Prairie Grove. It was all beat up. I looked at it, started sprinting towards it. I was like, that's going to be the best cutting board. Treated it. I've been using it. I mean, this thing's going to be a family heirloom. Mm -hmm. I love it. And uh, yeah, good luck trying to find one. <laughs> Maybe we can uh, work with a local vendor to recreate it. Yeah, we can try. Holler at us if you know anybody. Yeah. We I mean, see how that's just sticking together. Yeah. So you're breaking it up transfer it yeah there's no there's oh, that no, looks good there's no right way to do this but you know we're, we're eating outside this is it's more family style oh look at the burnt end to that that that's looks good flavor. chase flavor. that is flavor it's just getting heavy so i'm just gonna just go for, <laughs> it. Go for it it's your workout for the day oh yeah that looks great see what i mean by that cheese yeah, so the, the first layer of cheese is what kind of held it together and gave it that burnt, crisp mm -hmm. yeah, that's cheese flavor. Right oh, that looks so good. And you can see this peak, well, you did. That's soft cheese right there. Yum. Okay. You gonna set that down? I'm gonna set it down right here. Okay. 
All right, guys, what do you think? Smashed potatoes, who's trying some this weekend? That looks good. So lots of layers of cheese, onion, some moss blend from uh, Sasquatch barbecue available at City Supply, shameless plug. And then Chase is over here. I'm gonna act like this isn't hot. Oh my gosh, okay. There we go. Should I cut it? <laughs> Let's try it. Okay. We've been chatting a lot, Nervous. so. Okay. All right, here we go. Okay. Oh, that looks good. Let me do the traditional like. Yeah. Yep, yep. There we go. Wow. Good job, Chase. I would say there might be leftovers, but there's not. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. That looks good. So we did a tomahawk steak with the garlic herb um, new blend from City Supply, smashed potatoes. We really want everyone to go and try these this weekend. Put your own spin on them. Tag us with um, hashtag grilling with City Supply. What do you think? Yeah? Really good. You should try it. I will once I put this down. <laughs> <laughs> Grilling with City Supply is the hashtag, so make sure you tag us in all of your posts. And then, oh yeah, someone said, so dinner party at y'all's house? We should do that. That would be fun one time. Hey, why not? Let's let's, let's do that. Yeah. Um, Mo goes to sleep at 8. So yeah, gotta, so it have to be after that so yeah. we can really mm -hmm. focus. Yeah. Um, and then also, if you're interested in... This can K grill, we are running a stay home special right now because we're kind of trying to push everyone to stay home um, and grill at home. So we're doing a special. It's on sale right now, so you can grab one. We do ship nationwide straight from Argentina. Yes. Yay. And if you guys ever have any questions, you know, just holler at us. And if we don't know the answers about the grill or, or cooking, you know, I got a couple resources in Argentina. I know Derek Wolf, I know Sasquatch. We get some answers for you though, but uh, look, I mean, I'm no grill, grill master though. I just love being outside. I love cooking for the family and friends, and uh, you know, I highly recommend you know, just getting out and cooking. And, yeah. Um, you know, it's fun. You know, especially when the sun's shining, there's a football game on, or you know, a couple drinks with friends. Just, just get outside. Try. All right. Well, we're gonna sign off. Thank you guys so much for joining us. I'm gonna do a little flip around here. Yay! Thank Thanks you for guys. joining us so much ask us questions on city supply if you have any and um yeah yeah thanks for having us we'll see y'all later bye